For this tutorial we're going to be looking at using the cast rule to solve some simple trigonometric equations. And so I'm going to start off with uh, about as simple a trigonometric equation as I can come up with. And so that's going to be something like, let's say the uh, sine of theta is equal to negative 0.5. So that's a trig equation. It involves a trigonometric ratio, which is the sine of the angle theta. And we actually know the value of that ratio is negative 0.5. So to start off with this, the first thing we want to do is actually determine what is the related acute angle. So my first step is to find the related acute angle. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to take the absolute value of the ratio. So if the sine of theta is equal to negative 0.5, then the sine of the related acute angle is equal to the absolute value of negative 0.5. Because we're dealing with a related acute angle, the related acute angle must be between 0 and 90 degrees. So let's so this value is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. It's an acute angle. And so if the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees, then the ratio must be positive. So that's where that reasoning comes from. So the angle theta can have a positive or a negative ratio, but the related acute angle must have a positive ratio. So we use the absolute value of whatever was here, and we just take the absolute value of it on either side. So that being the case, how am I going to resolve that? Let me just go ahead and write that equation. That means that the sine of the related acute angle is equal to, of course, that's going to be equal to 0 0.5. So how do we find the related acute angle itself? The way we do that is we're actually going to use our inverse function. And so we, I'm going to rewrite this. This is the sine of the related acute angle. And I'm going to take the sine inverse of that is equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.5. So I'm taking the I'm taking the inverse sine of both sides. Sine inverse of sine we have inverse functions they do something that's called undo each other. So in the end all I'm left with on the left hand side is the related acute angle and on the right hand side I have the inverse sine of 0 0.5. Now in many cases we're going to skip. We're not going to write this middle line out, but you need to see where this is coming from. So for many people, they're just going to go straight from that first line to the third line in the equation. And from there, we end up with uh, the related acute angle is equal to, and I just use my calculator for this, which is the inverse sine of 0.5. And I've chosen this specifically, so we end up with a nice, simple answer of 30 degrees. So now I know my related acute angle. So that's my first step. And now I'm going to make use of that in conjunction with with what the information that I have here about the fact that this is negative 0.5. So my second step is I'm going to uh, determine the quadrants for the angle theta. or the location. So that's my next step. Determine which quadrants or what is the location of the angle theta. And the way I'm going to do that is using the cast rule. And I'm going to look here and I see that the sine of theta is negative. 
So because the sine of theta is negative, I ask myself the question, well, if theta is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, then that means that sine must be negative. Sorry, I said theta is positive. I meant if sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, then that means that sine must be negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So that gives me my answer, which is quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. So now I know a little bit more about where this angle might be. And so that leads us into our next step, which is we use the related acute angle with quadrants to determine the principal angle. And that may be principal angles. It may actually be more than one. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that might end up looking like. So what's one option there? The related acute angle with quadrants to determine the principal angle. So what's one of the quadrants we could be in? We could be in quadrant 3. So what does this situation look like in quadrant 3? In quadrant 3, and I don't need a really large or detailed diagram for this, in quadrant 3, there is my terminal arm, which would mean my angle theta is going to be there. My related acute angle is between the terminal arm and the negative x-axis, the closest x-axis in this case, and that's going to be 30 degrees. And so now I ask myself, or I actually calculate, what is this angle theta? And the other thing you might make use of to find this angle theta is the fact that from here to here, that's a straight line, so that's 180 degrees. And so how do I end up with my angle of theta? Theta is equal to 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, which is equal to 210 degrees. And that's in quadrant 3. In quadrant 4, I take a look at another diagram. I end up with, what is this going to look like in quadrant 4? There's my terminal arm. You can see I'm not worrying too much about where I put this. I'm just putting it in the middle somewhere. You can be more accurate if you want to be, but it's not really important. It's the concept that matters. So there is my angle theta all the way around to the terminal arm. And my related acute angle in this case is here between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis. And what I'm going to make use of in this case is the fact that a full circle is equal to 360 degrees. And so to find my theta in this case, I'm going to say that theta is equal to 360 degrees minus the related acute angle. So I end up with 330 degrees. So there are my, my two possible angles. Now there's one thing I actually skipped over and I really uh, need to go back and correct that to make this a complete example. Because with periodic functions, which is uh, functions that can repeat themselves every 360 degrees. These answers may not be the final answers. And so what I need to do is I need to know when should I stop counting. And so the way that I, I do that is it should be specified in the question when we first receive the question. And normally you'll get a question like this and it will say right there it will say something like where zero degrees is less than or equal to theta is less than 360 degrees. That's the standard way of looking at it. So basically it's saying where both of your angles are principal angles in standard position. They're both between 0 and 360 degrees. This could be different and if it's different we do have to take into account 
um, what that could be. So let's actually let's go down and let's deal with this situation. Since I've raised it and I didn't deal with it right away to begin with, let's imagine. So we've we've now found these values. Therefore, theta is 210 degrees or 330 degrees and now let's imagine A where 0 degrees is less than or equal to theta less than 360 degrees well if that's the case then there are no additional There are no additional answers, no additional, I'll just say answers. There are no additional answers to this one because we've already covered it. No additional answers, and another way of thinking that is no coterminal angles. But let's put in another possibility. Let's say B, where 0 degrees is less than or equal to theta is less than 720 degrees. Now if that were the case then we would have to consider we would need to consider coterminal angles. I'm just going to redraw the diagrams to make that a little bit clearer. Let's take a look first at 210 degrees. So I'm running out of room here, but I can probably fit it on. So let's take a quick look at 210 degrees is here. Is there another angle? that would look exactly the same as this angle in standard position that is between 0 and 720 degrees. And that other angle, we could actually continue to go around from there and circle back around to there. So that's adding another 360 degrees. So if I added 360 degrees, what do I end up getting from that? That's going to be 570 degrees is 570 degrees between 0 and 720 degrees? Yes it is, so that would be one of our answers. Similarly, if I look at the result I had here for 330 degrees, here's the angle 330 degrees, and then what else could I do? I could actually extend that further by going one more time around the circle and so what do I end up with in that case? I end up with 330 degrees and I'm adding another full circle and that's equal to in this case what is that? Uh, 690 degrees. So 690 degrees looks exactly the same. Is 690 degrees between 0 and 720 degrees? It certainly is. So which means that's the case. So in this case we actually have four answers. So in this one where 0 less than or equal to theta less than 3 equal to 360 degrees I have two answers and for this one where 0 degrees less than or equal to theta less than or equal less than 720 degrees I actually have four answers. Okay so there's a problem a linear equation using uh, trigonometric ratios and also making use of related acute angles and the cast rule.